Okay. I hope you can still see me. Um, can I just say welcome to today's webinar. Um, I really appreciate your time today, especially at 12 o'clock on a Friday. I hope you have a good cup of tea and maybe a wee bun to hand. Um, and I really hope that you come away from this call really thinking how PR can help you achieve your goals. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you my best advice and tips regarding PR and how you can use it to transform your business. Um, and when I say transform, I mean PR can help you build strong relationships with your customers or those you want to influence. Um, it can really enhance your brand organically and position you as the go-to expert um, in, in your field. You know, that's ultimately going to increase sales or increase your client experience if you're not actually selling a product. And like PR isn't complicated. It is, it is really easy when you know how. So my goals for today are, first of all, I really want to demystify what PR is and give you some of my tips. I know some of you on the call today, you're coming from different backgrounds. Others I don't know, but we'll do some introductions in a minute. Um, but, but what I will share is, is applicable across different industries, different areas, different spheres. I am going to introduce you to my PR training course, how to write a press release and engage with the media. And again, there'll be loads of time for questions and answers and like no question is of limits. Um, it's the best way that I can share my knowledge with you. So it's going to be roughly in three parts. Uh, the first part is looking at why PR fails. What are the main reasons as to why that is? And then I'm going to show you how you can get better at doing PR, how you could do PR well by, by looking at the three things that are generally missing. And then finally, I'll cover a few things that you need to do right now in order to do PR well for your business and use it to transform you know, your reputation, your business's reputation and your business profile. But before we go any further, if you wouldn't mind just dropping into the chat a wee bit more about you. Um, and again, that's about me tailoring what I'm going to say today, um, you know, a bit, a bit better to what, what your, your needs particularly are. So if you could drop in the chat, you know, what's the business that you're in? What do you do? Feel free um, to share your LinkedIn connections as well so we can all connect up because there's, I, I mean, I know there's so much different experience on this call. It's brilliant. Um, so you might be able to help each other with something further down the line. Do you know, and, you know, is there something you really want to know about PR? Do you know, what motivated you to sign up to this webinar today? And again, I'll try and address that as we go or feel free to reach out to me afterwards through LinkedIn or, or, or via email. So don't be shy, folks, into the chat. Um, I do know that Sarah has got her audio fixed. That is awesome. So tell me, drop it in the chat. What do you want to know today? What what can I help you with when it comes to your PR? Don't be shy. I'm going to pause for one wee second. There's obviously some shyness coming through because I'm getting a few DMs here. Um, so yes, wh where to start seems to be coming through loud and clear um, and there's a DM in as well looking at um, how you get started when it comes to your press release um, and just getting that confidence to put yourself out there. Um, we have a colleague who is completely new to PR and something that you'd love to know where to start. Yeah, absolutely. I can I can cover that and again, happy to connect up afterwards. So Thank you for that. Um, oh, we have another one. Yeah, worked in PR for a large organisation, but we'd love to know of opportunities for your small business and clients with like PR activity and oh, a LinkedIn connection. So thank you so much for that. We'll be connecting up. And yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with me. Uh, who am I? That's a very good question. I um, ask myself that a lot on a daily basis, I have to say. Um, my name is Sarah. I am an award-winning PR and communication specialist, and I have worked for large and small organisations over the years um, in many different areas. Um, I'm really proud to be um, a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Public Relations. That's my professional body, and also hold chartership with them. And those attest to my ethical, strategic and leadership credentials, and I hope that gives you a bit of confidence um, in, in what I'm going to share with you today. I've also got an MBA and I undertook that to widen out my business knowledge, so to move beyond PR and be able to really get to understand the challenges that, that businesses um, are, are facing. Um, I've worked in health, 
education, equestrian, agri-rural businesses. Uh, I started out life on an alpaca farm, uh, doing PR and marketing for that. That's a whole other webinar. I think the folks we can talk about that or a cup of tea another time. Um, I've worked with uh, local entrepreneurs, one in particular who developed uh, a body protector for female equestrians. That was just brilliant. And I've, I've worked in the political sphere as well. And in terms of what I've done, I've generated front page stories, features, run events, I love prep and CEOs and business leaders for really difficult uh, media interviews and, you know, for appearing in front of you, Stormont and Westminster committees. That, that's, that's the fun stuff. Um, and again, I've, I've done all this through a planned, managed and strategic approach that's really focused on understanding the target audience and having clear messaging. I say you can find me on LinkedIn or Instagram. That is my QR code there for my for my Instagram or my sorry, my LinkedIn profile. And I have a couple of Instagram accounts, actually. I've got Sarah McCracken underscore PR, but I've also got Sarah's Country Life because I've put a few posts about um, about, about the birds and my pond um, on one account, which proved more popular content. So they now have their own dedicated channel. So that that's PR in action. That's listening to your audience and providing them with what they need. But please connect up with me. So on to the main event, if you like. So I've been working in PR for very many years, as we've established, and I find that there's five main reasons why PR fails. Um, and again, these five reasons apply to business owners, entrepreneurs, large organizations, small organizations, and please do not be sat there thinking that large organizations have this sus, you're the ones with, with the budgets and all the rest of it. I can assure you that they don't. But I think the advantage that you as potentially a smaller business has is that you can act really quickly to counter some of these feelings. So reason one, you know, the first real reason that business leaders and owners uh, fail at their PR is that they don't understand what PR is and the benefits that PR done well can achieve. And we'll come on to this in a wee minute, but PR is not marketing or advertising. It is a very particular approach about reputation and relationships that done well can result in huge benefits for your business. Reason two is that organisations don't plan their PR. Um, you have all heard the saying that to fail to plan is to plan to fail, um, and PR is no different. Um, if you come away with one thing today, it's that you need a PR plan. And again, that's something that I can help you with. And because there's no plan, everybody then jumps to needing to write a press release, usually bad, badly if you don't know how, and um, we'll cover that later on, or just go and do something on social media. And this is usually a scattergun approach that is such a waste of time, effort and ultimately money. Reason number four for, for the epic fails is if you don't know who you're trying to talk to, um, you know, your message isn't going to get through. You could be wanting to speak to an internal audience rather than an external one. That's fine. Or maybe you want to speak to customers or maybe investors who can help you with your business. But if you don't spend some time you know, trying to identify who your target audience is, you're going to be wasting your time and effort again. And ultimately, that, that's money. And the final reason why you will fail in your PR is that if you don't know what it is you want to say, and this is called your messaging. So your audience, that's your customers, your staff, um, they'll start to get really confused on what it is that you want to say and what you stand for. And your efforts then will become more of the noise that we're bombarded with every single day. I mean, you'll be experiencing this as you scroll social media or flick through the news. Again, waste of time, effort and money if you don't spend some time focusing on your key messages. So I just want to pause here for a minute and just ask you to reflect, you know, do any of these resonate with you in particular? You know, have you tried to do some PR and it's not worked as well as you should? I mean, if you want to maybe reflect and jot that down, drop it in the chat. We, we can pick that up later. So what is PR? I mean, surely everybody just knows that public relations is just about sending out a few press releases and away you go. But um, PR is so much more than that. Um, but first, a quick look at marketing and advertising. So marketing is activities a business does to promote the buying or selling of a product or service. And it's really focused on driving sales. It's really, really important. Advertising is paying to tell your customers about your product or service, and it's quite a mass market approach. I mean, you've all seen the billboards, you've all seen the adverts, you know how that works. PR is about cultivating relationships organically. It's about your reputation. It's the result of what you do and what you say and what others say about you. Again, it's about that organic building of your profile. 
Now, the objectives, goals and some tactics used by both PR and marketing teams may be closely related and PR and marketing approaches need to be complementary to each other. PR is an essential part of your business because it can really help to build trust, credibility and a positive image for you and your brand, ultimately influencing those consumer perceptions and purchasing decisions. Or if you're not actually selling a product, influencing uh, why people should choose your service or why they should listen to you when you come to influence. So, I mean, imagine a potential customer searches for your business or product online and they come across some really good media articles featuring you or maybe details of you speaking at an event. That is going to create a more credible perception of you in the mind of your customer, your target audience member. And you think of all those public facing opportunities that PR can create and those credibility markers will all add up in favour of you and your organisation. So your customers will be talking about you when you're not in the room. And again, why is it so urgent to be focusing on your, your your PR right now? Well, I mean, it all comes down to your reputation, you know, even Oprah says. So if you don't have a good reputation, your business is going to suffer. If you don't have a good profile, your own personal brand is going to suffer. And since PR is about your reputation, listening to stakeholders and building relationships, I would argue that you need to make an investment in your PR right now. And that is why I have set up the PR clubs. I can start to help you to do that. And what if you don't value your reputation? Now, um, some of you might recognise this gentleman from back in the day. This is Gerald Ratner, and he is the classic PR fail case study. So if you don't remember him, do, do a wee Google search. But Mr Ratner did a speech at the Institute of Directors in 1991. Um, he owned a chain of jewellery shops across the UK and um, basically was trying to make a joke, but basically he said his products were crap. And I remember him actually going on Wogan, the, the Wogan show the next night, trying to trying to apologise and trying to explain what he'd meant. You know, you know, when, when you're saying one of your earrings are cheaper than a set of you know a prawn sandwich from Marks and Spencer's and is basically rubbish, you know, um, the customers listened to him. Uh, they stayed away, um, and his business lost five hundred million pounds in value more or less overnight. Certainly within within a week. So again, a mistimed joke that was not appropriate. He didn't value his reputation. And you might remember as well more recently, do you remember when um, United Airlines staff forcibly removed a passenger? Um, and this was the tweeted apology that came from the CEO and it really added to the public outcry. You know, it was focused on the airline. It wasn't about the passenger who'd been beaten up by the staff. But it was just a real PR disaster. It damaged the, the airline's reputation and share price. And it took a few days before the CEO apologised properly. So, you know, if it had some good PR professionals advising them, you might argue some of these things wouldn't have happened. And it, they, they just really show how poor PR decision making can impact on your business. Now, maybe some of you on the call do have a 500 million pound business. I don't know, but I would argue that with a smaller business, it's even more important to shore up your reputation. And some nice examples if you do value your reputation. So the gentleman on the left in, in the high viz, um, this is a story about a multi-million pound development uh, in an area of Belfast. And this is creating a really positive profile. It's a really positive story about the development, about the developers and about um, the potential beneficiaries of the development. So a really nice story there. And the one with the picture of the young people, this example highlights the work of a local charity. And once you get into the article again, the businesses involved in sponsoring the award that this team of young people won is highlighted, creating positive perceptions all around. And these are very localised stories. So don't be thinking either that you just you need to be in the front, you know, the, the headline page of the BBC. Think think really specific down into your niche, down into your, your really local area about where you could be placing stories and raising your profile and, and engaging with your target audiences. You don't have to be in the Guardian every day to create that public perception. So just a wee quick pause. If you have any questions so far, if you want to jot them down, drop them in the chat. We can come back to them at the end. But I'm going to take you through just three things that you could do now to really start to transform your business with a PR approach. So the first thing, it's about becoming known. How will you uh, position yourself and your business and start to tell your story? Number two is about building relationships, spending time, uh, you know, getting to know who your audience is, identifying them and building trust with them. And number three is all about building your credibility. Um, you know, have, 
how, how, do you, how are going to customers going to get to hear you on TV and on the radio or read about you in the media or hear you on a podcast and not your rival? So these three things will help you expand your reach, increase your visibility and reputation and ultimately bring in more sales or more service users or whatever your business goals are to your business. So to focus on the first thing is, you know, sit back and ask yourself, you know, do your customers really know who you are? We all get into our little social media bubbles. We're all in our little sort of business, you know, all networks. And you think people understand who you are and what you do. Um, I can guarantee you, um, I have a day job working for um, one of the UK's largest ENGOs. And there's an assumption everybody knows what the organisation does. But when I go out and talk to ordinary people, they don't know what it is that we do. They, they don't know anything about our work and they don't know anything about the species that, that, that we're trying trying to work with. So, again, that's something I'm always bringing back into conversations is that people don't know who we are, even though we're, we're a huge organisation. So think about that at your own level if you're in a much smaller business as well. So how are you going to become known? How are you going to position you as the the go-to person within your area and it can be really daunting i i know that so take a moment to think about how you might do that um you could be speaking um at, at an event this is an event that i spoke at in the long gallery at stormont never did i think i would be standing up in front of an audience of my peers through women in pr doing that you might want to think as well about your linkedin profile again understanding as your target audience on LinkedIn, how do you use that to start to, to build your profile and highlight what it is you do. Instagram as well, if that's where your, your customers are, you can start to, to do stories on there um, as well. But you know, what, what is that one simple step that you could take to start to become known and raise your profile? It might be just a LinkedIn approach. It might be going to a local networking group or it might be some online networking that you could do. So is there an event that you could speak at? Have you got your elevator pitch written, practice saying it and ready to go? Again, that is something I, I can help you develop. The second thing that you need to start to consider is to, like I've already said, know who your audience is and then start to build a relationship with them. Start to build that trust with them. Um, who, who do you want to do business with? Who do you want to influence to affect change? Now, this is my Where's Wally slide. Um, your target audience is not the whole world. Um, please, please just write that down and take that away with you today. Um, it's something that I struggle with on a daily basis in terms of trying to explain to people uh, what we're doing in terms of PR. You need to know who your potential customers are and then understand how to reach them. And if you know the types of news outlets they follow, you need to then build relationships with the relevant journalists there to have a better chance of content landing on them. Do you know if you're you know if you want to bring in legislative change to your campaign, for example, you need to know which politicians are going to be um, who you need to build a relationship with in order to start to influence that legislative process. And this is something I've had to do uh, many times over the years. Um, and more recently, I mean, this photograph is a photo from a photo shoot for a children's storytelling trail. The photographs were really designed to appeal to families as well as showcase that there was a nature element to the event. So, so a lot of thought went into who the target audience was and what kind of imagery might re uh, resonate with them. The third thing to transform your business. Um, have you ever sort of read about or listened to one of your competitors in the media or heard them speak at an event and thought, I could do that. Um, I certainly have. So, I mean, imagine if your customers heard you on the TV or read about you in a newspaper rather than a rival. A well-planned and managed PR approach will help you achieve this. And PR done well will help you tell your story. It'll help you become known as the expert in what you do and position your business as the go-to for customers, for event organisers, journalists, podcasters, the people that you want to influence. And again, these are some of the things that I have done to build credibility for myself. And because I've done it as well, because I've coached people through this, this is how I can really understand how, how to help you. So podcasts are a great one. Everybody loves a podcast these days. So so which one should, should you be on? Um, look at blogs and news outlets to position, you know, the leaders of your organisation, position yourself. Um, again, this is one from, from the Green Party back in the day. And look at, you know, building credibility in terms of delivering um, 
ad advice and guidance to to a political committee that that's another it, maybe you're in a business that's seeking to influence planning legislation for example you might want to start to understand how you start to influence lo local councillors so lots of different ways to be influencing there building your credibility and bringing about the change that that is relevant to your business and the benefits of all this transformation um, are many. Um, I'm sure you're going to agree with what I've got on the list. And if you can think of any more, please let me know so I can drop them into my slide for future reference. But positive word of mouth. You, you all know when you've had good experience, you're going to tell people. Equally, when you've had a bad experience, you're going to tell people as well. Customer loyalty. You know, think of your your your, perce your what perception have you got of those brands that you're loyal to? You need to be like that as well. More sales. That's what we're all after at the end of the day. Um, good employee morale. If you employ people, if you as a business and organisation have have a good profile and are positive, have a have a good culture. Um, you're going to keep your employees uh, for longer as well through through the morale. Competitive advantage, um, again, that, that's linked to your sales. So it's your business and organisation is the go-to, not, not your rival. Investor confidence is important as well. Maybe you're seeking um, a funder to come in or an investment. Again, that positive profile is, is going to play to your strengths in terms of that. And brand awareness as well about you know making sure that, that you're completely visible. So again, what would be the benefits to you of becoming better known, building relationships and better credibility? I mean, jot those down, have a bit of a think. I'm happy to pick those up um, at a later stage with you. So I'm going to take you through three things that businesses and organisations uh, often miss out when it comes to their PR. Um, fairly, fairly basic. Uh, Hopefully by now this won't be a surprise to you given what we've already covered. But number one is a plan. Please get a plan. Uh, know who your audience is and uh, your profile often isn't what it could be. So to look at those in a wee bit more detail, the majority of the hundreds of people, small business owners, large business owners alike um, that I've spoken to about PR, just they simply don't know where to start. And that's OK, because you're the expert in what you do. I'm the expert in PR, so I can help you get started. Um, if you're a small business owner, you can't be expected to know everything. But what I will say to you is you need to start your PR plan and align it to your business goals. And once you have a plan, your actions will all flow from that. You will need to do some basic planning uh, using a, a PESTEL or a SWOT analysis and identify what can be addressed by good communications. PR can't, can't solve everything, but you'll have your business plan. You know what it is you want to do. What can communications do to assist that? And just really just build it out from there. I mean, it's something I've done repeatedly and successfully over, over the years. I mean, I worked for a Northern Ireland political party back in 2015-16, and I wrote and delivered a strategic communications plan that saw an increase in vote share on the Dublin of the MLA representations. Now, it was doubled from one to two. But we took that as a very small party as, as a major win. And again, it was a planned, managed and strategic approach to get to there. What happens if you don't have a plan? Now, this this is a nice testimonial from, from a colleague I, I worked with. And it, it did make me laugh when I read it. You know, it says there, uh, be warned, if you don't have a plan, you will have a plan before work commences. Um, so I love a plan. Highly recommend that you get one. Remember, to fail to plan is to plan to fail. And you'll miss opportunities. And if I could bust one myth right now, it's that PR is free advertising. It absolutely is not. The cost is your time, effort, and that equates to money that you could have spent on getting some PR training or, or help and advice with how to write a press release, for example. So remember, PR is all about enhancing your reputation. So, so done badly, your reputation will will oh sorry will be impacted. Um, and it's back to that scattergun approach. So that's when you need to plan so you can absolutely focus. You know, you might get a hit here and there if it's you know doing bits here and there, but you know, imagine if you'd be really strategic and land your PR opportunities regularly, that's going to start to build your credibility a whole lot quicker. Back to the audience. I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. It is not the whole world. It's really about understanding who it is you want to communicate with and focusing in on that. It is not the general public. So again, if you take yet another thing away today, I hope you take away lots of things. It's really, this is really important to note. So your audience is specific people who are interested in your product, your service, or your campaign. 
or your expertise, whatever it is you want to communicate um, about. And you need to know who they are and how to reach them. And you do that through mapping them out and then prioritising and focusing on the key stakeholders. And then you have to know how to reach them. That's your tactics. But just looking at this, this is a power and influence matrix. And it's a really easy way to start to think about who your target audience is. And I've used this really successfully over the years. And again, if you work with me, I can take you through a session or a workshop to map out who your stakeholders are. It's all about making lists and post-it notes of the online equivalent of understanding who you're dealing with or who you want to influence and deal with or engage with, and then mapping them out where they sit on, on this list. Who's got high power and high influence? Who's got less power and less influence? And then you start to grip them. That shows you where to start uh, focusing your efforts. And again, I've done this really successfully most recently at um, an environmental charity. I facilitated a stakeholder workshop and from a list of literally hundreds of people. We were able to narrow that down to our top five stakeholders that we needed to engage with. And again, that's a lot more focus in terms of your time and effort. Now, people do move between the grids depending on what the issue is. That's absolutely fine. So you do review this repeatedly as part of your business plan and cycle. But what happens if you don't identify your target audience? Well, I'm going to get really repetitive here, everybody. You're going to waste your time, effort and money. Your competitors will be the ones that people hear about. Your customers, your clients, your, your, your people you want to influence. They're going to hear about other people and not you because you've taken a scattergun approach and it's not really working. Think of all those opportunities that you've potentially missed. I mean, there's no point in running a Facebook campaign if your audience is all on TikTok. There's no point in firing out press releases in newspapers if your customers listen to the radio or podcasts instead. And the third thing in terms of what business owners and leaders like yourself struggle with is about raising your own profile to gain kick gain credibility in the area in which you're working. So you do need to spend some time um, understanding what it is you want to become known for and putting a plan in around that. How do you bring to life everything that you're trying to say? And this is all about sharing an emotional, an emotional connection with your audience, your, your storytelling. So this is an, another nice piece of feedback I've had from, from um, an individual that I've worked with. Um, again, it was about setting out a personal PR plan to start to raise profile. I mean, when it comes to telling your story to the audience, you, you want to create stories that are going to really evoke a response and make them go, wow, or yes, or isn't this person or business great? And that can be what, that can be hard to get started. And I do, I do hear from a lot of business owners like, oh, I don't really have a story. And you don't need some massive, I've climbed Mount Everest and gone to the moon type story. You know, why have you started your business? Why is it so important? important to you that you create this change in the world through what it is you do. And I guarantee you, 15 minutes with me, we'll have a whole pile of stories all mapped out and be ready to go. So in terms of your profile, do you have one? Have you got credibility? What do you want to be known for? And how do you bring to life what it is that you're trying to say? And again, develop that connection with your audience. Um, so ideas to build your profile. Um, I'm sure you could easily start to make a list. And again, if you have any ideas, drop them in the chat. I do like crowdsourcing ideas as well because I get loads of brilliant ideas from other people. But you know, you can host and speak at events. You can enter awards. You can pitch to speak on podcasts. I actually have a, a pitch doc for podcasts. If anybody would like that, I'm happy to share that. You can pitch to speak at conferences. You, again, you can use LinkedIn and other social media channels. And you know, these are some of the things that I have done. I have. Uh, coached other people through these processes as well and I do know how hard it is to get started and have that confidence you to make the call or send the pitch and that means that I can help you. So what happens if you don't have a profile? Spoilers, you'll waste your time, effort and money. You know, Think of the effort um, you, know, you, you've put in into a press release that hasn't landed. Um, you know, The cost in terms of your time can be immense because you know, it gets ignored and nobody's going to hear about you. Maybe you have um, a really exciting but dull to you um, or dull to everybody else report uh, to, to announce or a product or service that you want to talk about. But unless you can bring that to life um, and show how it relates to your customers, then, you know, nobody's going to care enough to read about it. And your competitors are going to be out there doing things well. And then you're going to really miss out. You really need to know how to relate to your audience. You know, if it's dull, too technical, not relevant, there has to be a better option. 
So on to the more positive things of things that you need to do right now to be successful in your business. So to sum up what I've taken you through, you know, to do PR well and improve your reputation and your business profile, you need to get a plan, know who it is you want to talk to and raise your profile. And I'm sure you've thought about this a lot, you know, of why would you want to raise your profile? You know, why do you want to be in the media? Or if you don't want to be in the media, why should your business be in the media? I mean, being in the media is a really great way to enhance your profile and visibility. So I'm just going to focus this final part of the presentation about profile raising in the media, which is one of the areas that I am asked about a lot. So have you ever thought about this? But why should you be in the media? I mean, if you want to write it down, share it with me later, drop it in the chat now if you're feeling brave there's no wrong answers to this but you know some of the things that people like you have told me previously as to why they want to be in the media are about you know positioning their clients and their organizations as the experts or positioning themselves as the experts it's about sharing positive news it's also about responding to negative situations. So crisis communications is really important for businesses of any size to understand. And again, I deliver crisis communications training. I can help you develop a basic crisis communications plan in the hope that you will never have to use it. But at least if you do have to use it, it's all there. And it, you know, as the crisis starts to emerge, you've got a really good plan of do this, 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 and this, and that'll get you over the first hurdle of the crisis. Uh, raising brand awareness is really important as well. Uh, showing your customers, shareholders, audiences what you're doing, building credibility, building that know, like and trust factor. And again, if you can add to that, please do let me know so I can really enhance these slides for the next time. Richard Branson seems to know what he's doing. He's done quite well for himself. And if he believes that a good PR story is more effective than some page ad, well, who am I to argue with Richard? So getting in the media, I find, is one of the easiest things to do, but it can also be really hard to do as well, because obviously I've done it for very many years, other people less so, and it can be very, very daunting. And I do have to say, press releases, they are the bane of my life. I'm not going to come on here and tell you that I love doing press releases. They are absolutely necessary for your, your, your job and your role and to raise your profile. But and from working with a range of uh, businesses and business owners, I find that, you know, it can be really hard to understand what a press release is actually for. And again, that then creates my frustration because you're asked to write press releases about things that are not newsworthy. And again, from the other side of the fence, journalists get in press releases that are just awful to read. And they just ignore. I know they ignore them because they tell me that they ignore them. So again, if you don't understand what the press release is for and you don't write it well, you know, the journalist isn't going to open it, never mind read it, never mind consider the story, even if it's the best story that's ever come along. Press releases are about news and they need to be concise and to the point. There is a real knack to writing them. But again, no news equals no press release. When you are writing them, you need to be concise and to the point. And you also need to target the right journalists if it's a business story you need to go to a business journalist if it's an environment story you need to go to an environment journalist if it's a story about your business that creates and sells dog accessories you need to find journalists in publications or who run podcasts of that you know about dogs some journalists are generalists but what i would really encourage you to do is start to listen to the news start to listen to the radio start to read newspapers gosh that's very old-fashioned reading newspapers you can download them on the library app if you don't buy them but start to read the publications that you would like to be featured in and then you get to understand the style of writing this type of stories that the journalists are are um, interested in and the same for the radio start to listen to the programs and think yeah i could be on that i have something to contribute to this debate as always there are consequences if you don't write press releases well um Surprise, surprise, waste of time, effort and money. Think how long it's going to take to write it and then maybe getting it approved or signed off or reviewed, refined. Could be ours. You send it out into the ether. It's not written very well. The journalists feel spam. They've ignored it. It doesn't land. Now, occasionally you will get lucky, but it's going to be a real return on investment of your time. And again, if you don't do it well, your customers and clients will never ever hear about you because what you send out has been ignored and never see the light of day. And you'll just not be getting the visibility that you absolutely deserve. And again, this is where I, I can help you. Um, it's about getting your news in front of a journalist. It's, you know, I've been writing press releases that get read and published 
for years. Um, and again, I want to share everything I have learned with you so that you can position yourself as the authority in what you do and position your business in front of the right audience. It is really, really easy when you know how to do it. Um, but, you know, you don't need to take my word for it. Again, I have worked with a range of people in different organisations and, you know, people at different stages of knowledge as well. I'm just really delighted to be getting feedback like this. Um, I've delivered training, you know, to people within the community voluntary sector, within businesses, to in-house press release teams. They've all been refreshing their knowledge as well. Um, so again, when it comes to press releases and PR training, I am here to help you do that. So I do have a training course scheduled um, for April. It's called How to Write a Press Release and Engage with the Media. Um, I am really, really practical, and this course is going to do exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it's for you if you don't know where to start when writing a press release, or maybe you've tried and need to refresh your approach. I've had a lot of people through this training before who, who are PR professionals, but they just, they just need a refresher training. Um, I've also had people through the course before who are complete beginners and don't know where to start when it comes to writing a press release. Um, Either way, by the end of the course, you will have the skills and knowledge you need to write a press release and know how to engage with the media. And I know it works because I have received really good feedback on uh, this type of course. I mean, this is one from, from Naomi who hadn't written a press release before. She did my training and after the training, she sent me what she'd written, you know, just for any final edits. And I didn't edit anything. And I am really, really fussy. It was brilliant. So um, that was just lovely to receive that testimonial from, from Naomi. I mean, what I will cover in this training is why you should be in the media, what makes a good story, um, how to write a newsworthy press release, and it's going to have a really practical element to it as well. We want to sit down and actually write a press release. Uh, it's really important to me that you come away from any training that I deliver with something tangible. Um, so you'll have a press release and it'll be something that you can send out to the media as well. Again, I've delivered this training very many, many times and had some really brilliant testimonials and feedback on it. So the practicalities, just before we come on to the Q&A in a wee minute, it's going to be a half day training course in April. It's going to be online, so you can join from wherever you are in the world. I know we have one on the call today from Spain. So yeah, there'll be a whole live link up to Spain at some point, hopefully. Um, I've delivered this training, I say, online many times before, and, and I know it works, and I know it gives you the skills that you need to be engaging with the media. Um, and again, it's been delivered to those starting out, complete newbies, who've never written press releases, right through to in-house PR teams who've needed the refresher. And again, more fantastic feedback um, has been received on it. Um, and what I will say is, if the update doesn't suit, I have set up on the booking page a waitlist so if you scan that QR code, you can either book straight on to the course or you can go on to the waitlist for, for, for future events. Again, Bill Gates, he's done quite well for himself. So again, if you want some advice from Bill, he'd spend his last dollar on PR rather than marketing. So um, maybe he'd like to come on the course. Anyway, like I said, it's half day um, in April. Um, but I do have some bonuses um, as part of the course. So we're going to be joined by a journalist for a Q&A. Um, and uh, at the minute, it's Nigel Gould, head of news and sport uh, at Barra Media here in Northern Ireland. Barra Media are a German-owned global media company. Um, I guarantee you will have listened to their news um, on the radio, the radio stations right across the UK. And they also have a massive portfolio of magazines um, as well. So Nigel's been in the media for a very long time, like himself. Um, so he's going to demystify the media, explain how to write really well and to get things into the journalist's inbox and what journalists actually need to bring your stories to life. Um, I will review your press release after the event. Because again, I want you to come away actually with something really tangible um, and make sure it's as good as it can be. And there's a workbook um, as well to take away with you. Um, which you can always then refer back to. Um, so the cost, including all these bonuses, is £349. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to be running it. Uh, it's next month. Oh my goodness. How are we in the middle of May already? So again, more feedback from um, a PR course that I have delivered. And it's really easy to book. Like I said, there is a wait list as well if you want to sign up to that. Um, I can get another date arranged. Um, but if you do sign up, all the information will get fired out to you um, and that'll be us ready to go next month. So brilliant. 
If you have any questions about it, then please do not hesitate to ask. And that segues us nicely in to our Q&A. So do you have any PR questions? Um, if you would like to um, drop them in the chat, I will happily answer them or again, DM me behind the scenes if, you're, if you don't want to actually put them into the chat. And any question is welcome. So let me go and check the chat now. And have we drink a tea before we get started? There are some great questions coming in here. Again, further insights into bed PR for very small businesses such as mine and how to utilize it effectively. Um, yeah, I think if you're a very, very small business, PR is really important for you because you don't have the big marketing budgets or the big spend available to be doing those mass advertising. So, so a PR approach will work really, really well for a small business, particularly with it within your particular uh, niche. So it's really just about taking that step back and looking at your business goals and then thinking work and communications help to do that. So is it is the first uh, small step to be you're launching a new product, for example. This is about um, a, a lifestyle business, which I am looking forward to picking up after this call. So, um, do you know, what kind of magazines are your potential clients going to be reading? What are they on Pinterest? That could be a good option for you. What, what, what podcasts are they listening to? So where are they going to start to hear about what it is, the service or product that, that you're selling? So yeah, it's just about being really planned and really strategic because as a small business owner, you don't have the resources, either money or people, and you want to make sure that what you are doing is really, really effective. But happy to chat about that um, afterwards if you want some really specific tips on that. Um, we have a question. I would love to know how to open the doors to the right people to share how I can help people with their careers and leadership growth. I've paid for PR support in the past, but did not bring me in any noticeable results. How do you measure the results of PR investment? That is a very common question. So it, it, it's obviously quite intangible because when you get um, an article in a paper or you're on a podcast or whatever you've done, it's how do you actually measure that? So what I would encourage any business to do in terms of their PR plan, it's all about the plan, all about the plan, folks, is to set some really smart objectives in terms of your PR. So it could be to have um, X amount of podcast appearances next year. So I, I, I want 10, a pod, 10 podcast appearances this year. So what you then could do with that is you, you know, pitch the appropriate podcast. Happy to share my pitch doc with you if you want to develop that into your own um pitch the podcast, get on the podcast and create something for that podcast audience. It could be a free download. It could be a free call, but create that funnel. Um, and you can then measure your success of that podcast by people booking onto your call or downloading um, your, your freebie. So that's that. Um, but yeah, if you set your objective, that's really smart. That gives you something to measure against in terms of your KPIs and your input. Um, the other thing, there's some more qualitative analysis that you can do, which is just basic capturing feedback. So when people do hear about you, they've maybe told you about that, it's starting to capture all of that. And obviously you can do tangible you new know, media monitoring. Google alerts are really, really good as well for um, capturing any coverage that you may have. So yeah, smart objectives, that gives you something to measure against just in terms of your PR outputs. But Again, think a bit wider in terms of your, your credibility and your tangibility or your credibility and your reputation that, that's building up. And again, when somebody comes to work with you, ask them, how did you hear about me? Did they hear about you from that news article or did they hear you from your, your social media strategy, which is part of your PR strategy? So you can start to do that as well. But again, happy to discuss that at a later stage. So the PR plan and how it fits into the overall comms digital stakeholder plan is confusing. Absolutely. The best journey for a story traditionally was the press release to press, but now the, sorry, I am getting, I've got a wee thing in the way, I can't read a word, but now the digital space is huge and reach is so much greater. Is it a case of simply repurposing for all these channels after it's hit the press? Absolutely. So, your press release is about news, and I know you have experience in writing press releases and going through that traditional route. But think as well, social media is so powerful. I actually got asked this week, Joe, um, what's the difference between PR and social media? Well, 
PR is about your reputation. Social media is a channel to get your news out there and to engage with your stakeholders. So if you have this brilliant story, you need to now think, how will that land well on my social media channels or the social media channels of the news outlet? So do you need to create a short video to accompany the story? Do you need to create those audio clips, you know, the voiceovers to accompany that story that you can put out onto your social media channels? If you know, if you have a TikTok account, you know, what, what is what is your press release equivalent on TikTok, which needs to be a 10 second video or a summary or something like that? Um, so yeah, it, it is repurposing, but it's making sure it is tailored to the platform and the target audience on that platform. So yeah, that was a really, really good question. So there you go, folks. If there's any other questions, let me know or drop me a DM or let's go for a cup of tea and a wee chat. And if anybody is about on the 12th of April, I would absolutely love to see you at my training course. I say sign up to the waitlist if that date doesn't suit you. It's on the 12th of April. And again, any other questions, just don't hesitate to email me or DM me and we will take it from there. So thank you very much indeed. I'm going to stop the recording now. And if anybody wants um, a bit of a chat afterwards, then I am more than happy to do so.